digest the essential building blocks of like food um, for proteins and fats. This caused me to lack physical and emotional need for food. People have asked me in the past, what's the hardest things about living with cystic fibrosis? Sometimes I'm not quite sure how to answer that question because, well, I convince myself every day that it's easy. I minimize all the frustrations that I go through on a daily basis um, within even the first few hours of being awake. You might ask yourself, how is that possible? When you wake up every day ready to fight, the only way to survive is to focus on the positives. Positivity creates a buffer in your life against negative events, and it makes you resilient. There are many challenges to living with CF. Growing up with it and learning that who you are and what you deal with does not define you. It is not something to hide or to be embarrassed about. It's something that has made me personally strong and compassionate towards others who struggle with same. As a child, I had to understand that cystic fibrosis was not my fault, nor was it in my control. But nevertheless, I had to suffer through trying to find beauty, inspiration, and motivation in it. So that it may be worthy of so many of my hours and my precious days that were already limited. Before I go on, I must clear the air and tell you all now, in case you don't know otherwise, that cystic fibrosis is genetic. This means that you cannot catch it from me because I cough a lot or because I'm bleeding or any of those things, so you must be born with it. Before I was diagnosed, each morning when I woke up, I would start my day by throwing up. Um, I would cough and cough until I was in the fetal position on the ground, right in the face and gagging. What I know now is that my body was trying to save me from suffocating by the mucus that was filling up my lungs. My parents brought me to an allergist as they were in the dark completely about what was going on. The allergist was one of the few who caught the physical signs of CF. There's bumps on each one of my nails, um, which is referred to as clubbing. She referred me to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia for further testing, with the assumption that I was one of the lucky few to have cystic fibrosis. CF takes hours of care and tons of medical attention. Every nine-year-old's dream Luckily for me, I have loving parents who supported me and cared for me no matter how much I resisted waking up at 5 a.m. to do treatments and to shove 4,000 calories down my throat each day. Each morning, I fought the battle against the germs and mucus that was building up in my lungs. Today, I have a checklist. Um, each night that I create before I go to sleep, so that I went up in the morning and set up for success. The list looks something like this. 5 a.m. Wake up, take pill sack, take out my vest, set up albuterol, set up mucus inhalers, set up homes on inhalers, clean pieces, put away medicine. 6 a.m., check blood sugar, take morning pills, which includes selenium, vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin D, source CF, calcium, antibiotics, Allegra, and four enzymes with each meal. Breakfast at its best looks something like yogurt, two eggs, bacon, chocolate chip waffle, and cereal. This gets me about a total of 800 calories with 3,200 more to go for the day. Last but not least, give insulin. Due to my cystic fibrosis, I also now have cystic fibrosis related diabetes. This acts like type 1 in, uh, since it is insulin dependent and like type 2 because I was not born with it. And when I have completed my checklist, I can now shower, do my hair, and get dressed like a normal human being. Each night looks about the same as the morning, as I do two treatments a day. Living with cystic fibrosis is not an easy task in itself, but when you have the job of college to that, well, you really got your work cut out for you. College for me was busy, very busy. Not only did I have to get enough sleep, eat enough calories, take all my medications throughout the day, and wake up three hours before leaving my dorm room, meaning sometimes 4.45 a.m., but I had to find the time to be a normal college student, which meant sometimes not sleeping enough, sometimes having one too many drinks, and even being in the library until 2 a.m. to study for that exam the next morning. Needless to say, I had to find a balance, and time management was something I eventually became a pro at. Thankfully, as long as I didn't have an 8 a.m., these early mornings weren't always so early and the rest of the balancing acts came with time. My one wish in college was to get involved, make a difference, and put my whole heart into every opportunity possible. I felt like there was truly no promise of tomorrow, so I could make the best of today. 
Most days, I woke up feeling like I had a chest cold, and every time I breathed in, I had to fight the urge of coughing. But if my body would let me, I would enjoy every moment as best I could. I find myself feeling this way today. Motivation is a key factor in my success. My regimen gets old, and the strict and tedious nature of it doesn't just become fun. I have to wake up each morning motivated to spend hours putting together treatments and remembering this medication and that medication. And I'll try to explain it to you in a way that maybe makes it easier for you to relate. Many of my friends have said to me that when they get sick, sometimes they go to the doctor, but only to get so bad that they can no longer function the same. When their doctor prescribes them an antibiotic to take, it frustrates them to have to remember to take it, and they often miss doses or just stop taking the medication once they start to feel better, without even consulting their doctors first. They're relieved, and once they are done with their medication, they're happy to get back to the normal lives. One that may not be interrupted by medication for years to come if they're lucky. This is not a luxury room. There are no breaks, there are no vacations, there are no medication for days. There is no going to the doctor only if I feel like I need it, or stopping medications once I feel better. There is no other life to get back to. This is my life. I have to find a way to live it. I am truly a fighter, and I am truly successful each day, many times throughout the day. My life can be hard, but I choose to be positive. Today, I enjoy listening to the Imogen Heat Station on Pandora. While I do my treatments and get ready for my day, this makes me happy. Almost as if I'm in a movie and I'm doing this every morning for someone else. You know, it just takes the sorrow away. I can no longer feel bad for myself or give up. This strength isn't for me. It's for this song, for this person in this movie that I'm just playing. When you have this feeling day after day, you start to appreciate the little things. Every bone in your body feels engaged in every moment. With all its heightened sensitivity, I feel the desire to make a difference and join with others towards the goal. In college, I joined seven different organizations on campus. I was an RA for a year and a half, and I had an on-campus on job, and usually was running around campus taking pictures for this event and that event, really anything going on on campus. In between lung infections, hours of treatments each day, 30 to 40 pills, calories on calories on calories, forced into my system, I lived. Not only did I live, but I thrived. And I was motivated to help others. CF has been my blessing and my curse, and if I'm lucky, I will die some other way. Many people with CF are in the constant fluctuation between different rounds of medications, different doctor's appointments, hospitalizations, and waiting lists for double lung transplants. I'm a lucky one. The funny thing about this disease is that no one with it is truly safe. Today, my medication is keeping me healthy. Tomorrow, the spiral down could begin. Being thankful and appreciative for every moment and for every opportunity, regardless to what could be tomorrow, has kept me living. I recently started reading this book, and it's written by this 40-year-old man living with cystic fibrosis. This in itself is amazing, because the odds are not in our favor to live past our 30s. He titled it, How I've Cheated Death. This is a true depiction of what I deal with each day. So while I'm cheating death, I'm going to make the most of it. If you're interested in learning more, please, please read this book. Delta Phi Epsilon nationally contributed over $1 million to research to find the cure for cystic fibrosis. And for this reason, and many others, I believe that I have a fighting chance. When I was diagnosed, I was told I could go to college, maybe. 